Hi, my name is Dennis Siri. I am executive director and founder of the New York City Independent Film Festival, Independent in Spirit, International at Heart. And this is the New York City Independent Film Festival Meet the Filmmakers podcast. Join us while we meet this year's filmmakers. Thank you. Bye bye. Today we're here with Bruce and Robert from the, from the animation film Robot Parade. Introduce yourself, guys. I'm Bruce Lazarus. I'm the uh, composer of the music for um, Robot Parade. And I am Robert Martins, and I created the visuals, the, the animated visuals for the movie Robot Parade. All right, so I guess my first question would be, so how long have you been doing movies, animation? Do you always do animation or do you do other things? Either one of you. Bruce, why don't you start first? Oh, we, we do a lot of other things. Um, but, you know, Rob and I were friends in, in junior high school. And um, then we were subsequently out of touch for a few years, how, maybe 40 years. And then through the miracle of Facebook, we were able to reunion again. And then I found he lived about five miles from my apartment. So, oh, maybe a week or two later, we uh, met for coffee in, in Manhattan. And um, I, he knew me as a, a young musician uh, back in ninth grade. And I knew him as Rob as a young painter back in ninth grade. And now I'm a professional composer and um, Robert is a wonderful artist and, and also an art teacher. So we've been very busy. Um, we came to talking. We found we were still on the same wavelength after all these years. And I said, or maybe Rob said, um, you know, we have to do something together. We, we've got to start working together. And that was about 2018. And um, the first thing we came up with was uh, moving parts, kind of abstraction. Maybe um, Rob can tell you more about it. Okay, well, moving parts is what we call an optical ballet. Uh, some other people might call it visual music. Abstractions set to music. And it's just optical forms, colors, shapes. Uh, and we evolved it together. I would create visuals. Bruce would compose music. We would compare notes. I'd make suggestions to him. He'd make suggestions to me. And uh, over about a year's time, uh, we evolved this approximately 10 minute piece, which worked out pretty well, we thought, for a first time effort. Okay, great. And then you went on to Robot Parade, which is where you are today. So, what made you want to be a filmmaker? Or is it, or is it kind of by accident because you both enjoyed each other's company and you liked working on, uh, you painted, you, you did music, so it was kind of a natural? Well, I guess this is a question for me. What made me want to be a filmmaker? Well, filmmaking runs in the family. My grandfather, who was born in 1900, started making home movies when he was in his later 20s and made movies all the way up to his death in the 1970s. And uh, these, these were aesthetically home movies, but you could tell from looking at them that he really aspired to be a film maker. They were very, very sophisticated for home movies. They were interesting to watch. They were well composed. They were edited. Uh, he, he, he had a full command of the vocabulary of filmmaking, even though he worked as a salesman. Um, and at one point in his life, he had an opportunity to start a new career in Hollywood, but circumstances prevented him from leaving Queens, and he stayed for the rest of his life in New York City. But he kind of uh, made movies just to, uh, you know, just continue being, uh, you know, he just loved filmmaking. And it carried over to my father and then to me. Now, when I was in junior high school, I got the filmmaking bug. It was all the rage. Now, you know, when when the 16 millimeter, when the Super 8 cameras came out, you know, and it was really, really super easy for anybody to pick one up and start making movies. You know, there were all these camera clubs and movie clubs happening in schools. And I had that bug for a while. And I made a movie that was 
you know, visually sophisticated, but aesthetically juvenile. You know, it's it's embarrassing now. You know, it does, you know, student stuff, you know. And then about 40 years later, though, um, I was looking at my grandfather's films. He had been dead for about 30 years now, but it was the first time I actually looked at his films and, and tried to actually catalog them. And I realized what a filmmaker he was. You know, he really could have made a, a career in Hollywood if, you know, circumstances had been different. So that made me feel like, well, I should carry on my grandfather's legacy and, and continue to be a filmmaker. And now I'm doing that. Uh, I didn't go to Hollywood, but I did go to YouTube, which is you know, <laughs> just as good as, as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, but it wasn't until I met Bruce that I actually uh, made a real effort to to work on original material with with original music and original visuals. Um, so it was a good meeting. Thank you. All right, and Bruce, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yes. Well, um, I I grew up in a musical house. My um, dad was um, an excellent amateur musician, and I mean amateur in in the best sense of the word. Uh, someone who, who really loved music and and performed. He directed choruses in his youth. He played um, in jazz bands, mm -hmm. um, but then he, he went on to other things. He was an at and engineer and, and so on. Um, but he passed the um, music bug on to me, uh, uh, apparently. And um, it, I knew from an early age, I, I was almost certainly going to be a musician. It was a choice that I, I never really questioned. So the, the, the real question was, what kind of musician did I want to be? So I played woodwinds, I played piano, but I also liked building things. I liked making things like game boards and, and so on. So um, when I, I was 14 or so, um, I thought, you know, um, I, I'd like to make music, like literally to build music. So I, I stuck with piano um, as the composer's best friend and um, set my sights on, on being a composer. I, I had I trained at, at Juilliard and subsequently um, had a, have had a, and are having a, a long career as, as a freelance musician. Um, over the years, I, I mostly worked with dancers in, in ballet and modern dance. And what I particular, particularly liked and, and still do is collaborating with choreographers, which I, I've done a number of times over the years. I, I was always interested in film composing, but somehow never had an angle. You need to find a kind of niche for yourself as a film composer. And, and that was something I, I was not able to get to. Um, again, I owe Rob a, a lot of gratitude on this because when we started working together, um, I thought, you know, I, I feel like I'm a natural film composer. And um, this is something I, I really like doing. The Contemporary, um, our, our contemporary computers, um, my um, printing program finale, and it's easy access to different sound libraries enables me to produce an orchestral sound with, without leaving my studio here. And um, I, I think that's an enormous asset now when you're, you're trying to write um, music for soundtracks for animation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So I guess, so what was the, I guess it's too late to ask what your family thought. Um, we already got to that. Um, so what was the hardest part of making this film? Uh, for me, for me, the hardest part was coming up with a satisfying ending. I, I have a strong aversion to weak endings. And um, I had, uh, as Bruce and I were discussing, you know, the narrative of the film, uh, I, I had maybe, you know, 10 different possible endings in mind and uh, some were ambivalent, 
which can be good sometimes, you know. Uh, others were just incomprehensible to all but the most uh, hardcore science fiction buff, which was not exactly the audience we were aiming for. Um, nothing wrong with them, but, uh, you know, the general public wouldn't get it. Um, so it took a while, but finally, when we decided upon it, I, I, I told, I, I showed Bruce, uh, an example of this ending and he really, really liked it. And if Bruce liked it, that's good enough for me. And it's, and I, and I'm convinced we, we both chose the best ending for this film. I guess that was also the fun part. And my next question was going to be, what was the most fun part? Well, let's hear Bruce the first, what was the hardest part of this project for you? Oh, that's easy. Um, about uh, halfway through the film, um, um, Robert brings out a cart from the right part of the stage, um, which is has these four weird looking, what would you call them, Robert? The, birds, <laughs> mechanical birds. <laughs> mechanical, mechanical birds, right. And, and it's, it's roughly based on the Paul Clay painting of the twittering machine. So we have this this bird who's pushing these these four like twittering machine birds along, and they all have their their own song, and they sometimes are um, sort of singing it on their own, and then every once in a while they come in together, and it it goes on that way for about a minute and builds and builds until all four of them scream at the same time. And then the cart goes its merry way, and we we reach the um, the next character. So I had to look at this very carefully, and it took me at least a week because I studied each one of those twittering birds separately, notating their rhythm and approximately what pitch I thought. Though as they come higher out of the cart, the pitch goes up, and or the pitch goes down if they're lower. Uh, so I had to transcribe. Um, as though I were taking dictation, um, each one of these birds separately. Um, so I had the rhythms and approximate notes written out, but then I had to figure out, well, what do they actually sound like? So I needed to create a tune and uh, I had to make it so it stood out from the rest of the march music. And th this took a <laughs> this took a long, long time. I, I I also need to make it entertaining and comprehensible to anybody watching it the first time around. Yeah. So that was my biggest problem. Uh, it was what, fun. What was the most fun out of it all? You said, well, you, you said that was fun. So I guess it was the hardest part, but it was also the most fun part. That was it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, something else I'd like to mention. Uh, um, and this is a good example of, of our collaboration where uh, towards the beginning, we have these trumpeters that appear one by one and they're blowing a fanfare. And originally that was going to go directly into that twittering machine cart. But I thought, you know, we have this fanfare. We, we, they have, it has to be a, to announce something or other. Mm -hmm. so we have to do something big after the fanfare. And I said, um, we, we have to have some super superheroes or, right. or something. And so Rob came up with these wonderful balloon floats that look like who knows. But I had to identify them musically as being superheroes. Otherwise, we'd have no idea who they were. So I listened to a lot of John Williams, um, like Indiana Jones and, and Star Wars and Jurassic Park, uh, Superman. And I tried to derive from that. What does... What does superhero music sound like? And I, I created a sort of composite of, of all of these. It, it only lasts for about 15 seconds, um, but, but that was great fun to put together. Okay. And how about you, Robert? What was the fun part? The fun, well, there are two. The, the, the most fun part was watching it when it was finished and thinking, <laughs> oh my goodness, look what we've done. It came out really well. Mm -hmm. uh, the other fun part, was being surprised by what Bruce wrote in response to what I what I offered to him. Like uh, Bruce was just talking about the twittering machine. Well, when I created that sequence, I had no idea whatsoever what Bruce's music would sound like. I had my own little private orchestra playing in my head. 
you know, but but what but no matter what I could think of, uh, whatever Bruce composed was vastly superior. <laughs> And I would just hear and say, oh, thank goodness he did it, not me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I That's guess, always fun. I love those surprises. I guess the other the other question is, which once again may not really work for you two guys, but I usually ask, so what is considered success in the indie film world? Because nobody gets rich from the indie film world, except for maybe Martin Scorsese. They keep saying he's an indie, but not my idea of indie. But, but, but what is success in the indie film world? What do you think? What would you say that was? I, I can think of two things that might be some measure of success. Um, one is the satisfaction I get out of it. I mean, it's something I, I really enjoy doing. So that in itself, I, I watched Robot Parade dozens of times. I always laugh when the um, the drummers come out. I mean, that's the, the funniest part. Um, I'm always um, taken aback somewhat when the traffic bot um, looks at us and, and turns on its its bright lights. So um, I, I really enjoy the piece it, itself. I guess the, the other measure of success is for my entire life, I've had um, works for solo piano, chamber ensemble, chorus, and, and so on. But I bet that more people have heard my music for these, these three animations, Moving Parts, Oysters, and Robot Parade, than um, all of the people who have heard my other music put together. So I, I like that very much. So reach. Reach. Okay. And Robert, what would you say suggests its successes? Okay. Well, I I I'm not sure about success. Maybe for me a better word would be satisfaction. Um that's that's good for success. That's the success. Something tells me that a piece is successful when I don't feel the need to to tinker with it. Um I mean everything I do. You know, there's always a little something I, that makes me feel like, oh, if only I had just done this little thing differently, it would be even better. And uh, but but if after something is finished and I really don't feel the need to do that, then I feel like, yeah, it's good enough. I don't need to work on this anymore. And you know, if other people like it, I'm happy too. That's so cool. sounds like success to me, also. Thank you. Guys, that, that's the last of my question, but is there anything you guys want to say? Any any pearls of wisdom? Any any statements? Mm. Anything you want to throw in here? It's your podcast. <laughs> your introduction. Okay. Well, we're, we're, we're working on a new animation, and um, I don't know if we've settled 100% on the title, but we, we've been calling it Humans Go Home, and it, it's kind of a take on 1930s, 1940s science fiction films, um, complete with um, um, monsters and astronauts. And it, it builds on some ideas of a robot parade. Is that a, is that a good description? Robert? For now, we yeah. don't want to have any spoilers here, right? But yeah, that's a pretty good description. Uh, I would also, <laughs> add in that there's some references to movies of the 50s and the 60s too. I, I think basically it's inspired by the science fiction movies we watched on television when we were growing up, which would include, you know, everything from Flash Gordon up to whatever was being made on, you know, TV movie of the week. So, mm -hmm. um, when you watch the movie, you'll probably see references to all these different uh, genres, um, different ages, uh, different media. You know, the fun part will be to, you know, see, you know, to, to catch the references. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Is that so okay, Bruce? What do you think? Is that all right? Yes, I, I was thinking of some of the movies we grew up with, like the um, the giant behemoth. I mean, not just the behemoth, but the giant behemoth. And then there was Rodan and the first Godzilla movies. I mean, the, the old black and white ones with Raymond Burr. The Blob. And, uh, the Blob. <laughs> and, and so on. So um, 
um, it, it's been a long time since those were, were on television, but um, that's that's where we grew up. So we, we wanted to make a, um, let's say a more sophisticated stylized version that, that both takes that idea into the present and, and is also an homage to that kind of science fiction monster horror movie of, of the past. Okay, that's great. Thank you guys. I'm just gonna do a little plug here for your movie. So the robot parade will be shown uh, June 7th, 2024, Friday, which is a Friday, at the New York City Independent Film Festival at the Producers Club. You will get to see the great Robert uh, Robot Parade film of these two gentlemen. And we hope to see you both there. Thank you. Thank you.